Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Musetti Show. I'm Pete Musetti. It's actually Town of Clinton night on the Pete Musetti Show tonight. And with me to discuss what's going on in the Town of Clinton is a member of the Clinton Town Council who is also state representative, Chris Anaskovich. Peter? <laughs> Chris? How are you? Hey, bud. How are you, man? I'm good. What's going on? Plenty. Plenty. It's been a while since we've seen each other. Yep. I think last it's time I saw you was election day. Yes, correct. It's been a while since I've been on here. I know. I, I know it. Put down the bottom of the list again. <laughs> exactly. Now you got to work, you, work, your, <laughs> I gotta work my way back you got to work your way back up. <laughs> All right. There's a lot going on in the town of Clinton. There is. Where do we want to start? Ooh. <laughs> your pick. I guess we could start at the top. Uh, um, uh -huh. All right. So recently, um, let's see, I guess we're in January. So in December, our town manager, uh, Carl Kilduff, had um, put his resignation in. Yes. Um, so he was given, he gave his re resignation. Uh, per his contract, he gives uh, 60 days before he leaves. So oh. we're in the middle now of trying to hire a new town manager. Mm -hmm. So that's a, you know, lengthy process, um, you know, but we have, you know, tied with that, we have new council members. So it's kind of, you know, a process that we'll have to go through. But I think we're, we started well. We had a meeting last Wednesday, and at the meeting we determined that the council would be the quote-unquote subcommittee um, that would be involved. Okay. Uh, we agreed to hire a consulting firm, Randy Franks Consulting, uh, to do the search for the new town manager. So they'll help us do that, and then they'll vet the candidates, and then they'll bring those candidates to the council, and then we'll interview a certain number of them, and then at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll have a new town manager. Um, unfortunately, the process is probably going to take longer than 60 days. Okay. So that being said, we have to then in, you know, engage into an interim town manager. Um, it's it's a completely different now. I think when we used to have the first selectman form of government, it was a little bit different. Now that we have a town manager, that town manager does a lot more um, and is more involved in day-to-day -day activities. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot on his plate. Um, recently, our finance director also retired. Right. Um, so Sue Cunningham was there for a long, long time. And so she retired. So she's been gone since the middle of December. Um, so it's kind of the, the perfect storm that we're having. So. Uh, town manager leaving, our, finan our finance director resigned, so we're in, the, we're in the hunt for a lot of people. Yeah. So Now, what they don't understand, what them people out in TV land might not understand is the town manager runs the day-to-day -day operations, so the chip and the town manager is not seen at any public events. That's right. Where the, that's where the... So, right. So that was kind of still the thing that was kind of a sticking point that we kind of, you know, had those conversations about what we really want, you know, and again, it's the town manager runs day to day. He's at the town hall, you know, deals with department heads. Um, the council has a chairman. That chairman is the face of the, you know, the council. And that's how things should be progressing. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get, you know, I think, listen, I think we're losing a great town manager. He was yes. wonderful. He was very smart. Um, you know, people have their opinions like, don't like. Um, you know, I got to know him well. He's a, is a great person. Very, very smart. Did great things for our town. Um, you know, unlucky to have him leave. Uh, luckily, maybe we can try to get somebody as good as him. Um, but again, I think the dynamic for town managers has changed as well. So, in initial discussions with the search committee or with the, the headhunters, mm -hmm. you know, that dynamic has changed a lot too. Um, you know, so hopefully, um, you know, there'll be some good candidates that they vet and we can get back to the position where we were before. I mean, and let's not forget it, we're in the great all budget season. So, right. in the middle of all of this, um, you know, we'll, we'll be dealing with that. So, uh, Carl's been, you know, he's been good. He's yeah. going to run the workshops that we've always had in the past for uh, budget season, okay. um, which allows to get the council members up to date on conversations he has with the department heads. Mm -hmm. um, town council's the quasi board of finance. Uh, town manager deals with the department heads. They put the budgets together. He'll deal with uh, the superintendent of schools and then come back to us and, and have that discussion. So, uh, we've been lucky the past three, four years. You know, we've been flat on our mill rate. We've had a reduction. Um, you know, so things have gone well. And, you know, we can just hope to kind of steady the, the ship while we're going through all these uh, rocky roads because it's going to be, it's going to change. The dynamic of the council has changed. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, two new council members. Mm -hmm. Hank Teske was reelected. Brian Roccapiori was elected. Right. Um, and I guess the, the sad news out of town is, you know, um, Tom Hollinger passed away. Yes. Unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago, right, right before Christmas, and um, mm -hmm. you know, Tom was a, not only a, you know, a pillar of the community, Clint sports shop. Yeah. You know, he was on board of finance for an extended period of time. He was involved locally in town. 
been seated on the council for a while, you know, considered him a dear friend as well, so it was very hard to lose him. Um, uh, you know, but we've been, you know, got to deal with what you got to deal with. Uh, we've been able to replace him with Mike Chauve, um, who is the assistant fire chief in uh, Guilford, um, but also has a lot of background in working with budgets. So, you know, hopefully we're in a good position. Losing Tom is, is a huge loss, especially during budget season, because he brings a lot of knowledge uh, to that table. And, uh, you know, there's going to be there's going to be a void with him gone. Um, but luckily, you know, we'll, we'll have a, a full council. We'll deal with the budget season and hopefully uh, things will work well. I, re I remember when I got home that one that afternoon. My mom looks at me. She's like, "Yeah." By the way, I'm like, "What happened?" She's like, "Tom Hollinger yeah. passed away." I'm like, "I look at her. I'm like, it was are a you shock kidding me?" She's like, "No, man. Yeah. that's shocked to a lot of people." And I yeah. think you know, not people, many people knew what was going on. He kept most of his stuff, you know, to himself. And yeah. so, um, talked to him on Thursday, the week, you know, that weekend he was gone, and it was like, you know, looked fine. You know, it was getting better, and uh, you know, it just a freak accident. So, you know, we, we pray for, you know, his, his wife, uh, Sarah, and their two kids, and hopefully everything. Luckily, the community's been great. Yeah. You know, Sarah's been a pillar as well uh, with Clinton Sports Shop. So people mm -hmm. know her, people come by, and, it, you know, they make sure that, you know, that she's doing well. So it's good that, that we have that support in our community. And your office is right down the hall. In my office, <laughs> right. so make sure she's doing okay. And you can always know when you want to go over and talk to her. So that's, exactly. that is the benefit. Exactly. Yep. So Pearson School. Yes. What's going, on? <laughs> What's going on with it? So in the middle of all of this as well, right? Yes. So Pearson went out for an RFP a few months back. Um, we went through the process of vetting a couple developers that the council had discussions with. Um, we've decided on a preferred developer uh, with nonprofit, the Hope. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be coming in and they're going to do uh, senior housing. So that's going to be a uh, project of, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was about 42-ish units that were going in the building. Um, but so the dynamic of it would be that we'd still be keeping, the, the town would still have the access to the gazebo in the front. Okay. And then the easement on the entrance where the church uses for parishioners and then food for all in the back. So they'll still have access to all of that. Okay. So we're able to work with the developer um, to let them know that we'd be interested in, in maintaining some of that space uh, for town usage. So when we do the summer concerts and, and such, we still have the ability to use that. So that was an important thing for us as well. Uh, the good news is that, you know, the, the facade of the building, um, you, know, the, you know, the history of the building is going to stay intact. Okay. And that was another important thing for the town. We knew that uh, people were passionate about it. This was a, going on for almost five years, um, you know, since Pearson's been closed. So a lot of talk about what should go in there, what we should do with it. At the end of the day, this was something that we felt was needed. Uh, needed especially for our community where we have an aging population and we're able to provide some some housing for for people in town not specifically for in town but at least you know helping our community as well um, the town will maintain the interior of the building as it relates to the gymnasium because that is to stay intact in order for the developer to get historic tax credits mm -hmm. um, so there's some talk about kind of what we're going to be doing with that interior of it so there's some options on that and there'll be more to come on that when we make the final decisions on that. Now, what exactly is Hope Partnership? That's just a nonprofit and they do housing. And then they, you know, they, they work with uh, the communities to, you know, to provide that, you know, and it, it's, it's, I mean, it's a t difficult job. Yeah. I mean, you know, what they do is, is great work. What they do is provide, you know, affordable, reasonable priced housing for, for individuals. Um, you know, they have a laundry list of um, people that are waiting for housing so that they know that there's a need for it. Um, I think once we know that it's, you know, the senior housing option is, is available there that, you know, we'll see, we'll see those fill up fairly quick. I mean, that's the good news. The bad news is you're not going to see any movement for three to five years for it to kind of finally be done because right. they're going to go through their, like, so now we, we had to make a referral to planning and zoning. So they have to go through their process of, um, of that sale. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the HOPE organization, they have to do what they need to do on their end to, you know, set up their financing and the tax credits. So there's probably 18 months, I think, is what they've kind of dictated for to us that they'll need to work on to do some of the stuff that they need. Okay. And then at that point, you know, you break ground and then you build. So it's, it's, it's still a lengthy process. I think the benefit is that we know what's going to go there. So that's been decided. And hopefully it just, you know, continues uh, smoothly down the road. And no pickleball. No? Not at Pearson. No. <laughs> do, do, do we have pickleball? We do have pickleball. We have pickleball going Considering over at Considering you, you open that can, you open <laughs> that can, go for it. Where? 
It's going at IROC, Indian River okay. complex. So there's going to be two in the back. Um, so that we'll we'll do that. There was well, actually, that's wrong. So that was the first one. So now it's been moved and it's been changed to go up by the, where the basketball courts are. Up at IROC. Yes, because there was a problem in the back because underneath where they wanted to put it, there were pipes. So they would have had to reinforce the ground by putting cement. So it would increase the amount of money that we allocated. So we used ARPA funding for pickleball for the installation of pickleball courts. Okay. So we only designated a certain amount. And then because of the changes, once they did the, uh, the groundwork, I right. realized they would have gone over that. So there's now a move to move them up closer to um, the Park and Rec building mm -hmm. where the basketball court is. Gotcha. Now, I was downtown recently, and I saw the, the beautiful downtown revitalization going on. <laughs> it's Grand of Pete's, mm -hmm. yes. So they uh, applied for and received a, um, a grant, um, a facade grant that the town had. Yep. Um, so they applied for that, they received it, and um, they began work. So that, it needed to be done. Um, obviously, the front of the facade of that building was old, dated, yep. weathered. You can use any word you want. Sure. Um, so it needed a little work. Um, so the owner, uh, yeah, Mike Nuzzo, obviously you know, needed, knew he needed to do something. So right. um, was awarded the grant, and it's great that he's doing that. Um, and as far as the council goes, there is more conversations that we're going to have as far as downtown goes. Um, you know, fire department to, to kind of North Street that we look at kind of what we can do down in that area. Um, and the difficult problem that we always have is that we don't own the properties. So none of those buildings are owned by the town. So there's always talk about what we would like to do down there. Yep. But unfortunately, we really can't decide what we do down there. So some of the things that we can do are look at the regulations in the town and see if we want to change the regulations for what is and isn't allowed in that area. Yeah. But again, that could be a problem because then are we, you know, are we um, keeping other people out that may want to put a business there? So do you want an empty building or do you want a, you know, a fully occupied building? So, you know, across the street was the, uh, the veterinary uh, hospital. That's, they're still working on that. That's still an in process. The old CVS. The old CVS. Um, you know, but it's the, at the end of the day, it, the difficulty for our town is that we don't have sewers. Right. So our infrastructure lacks the, the need to have certain things that we may want. So if those building owners wanted to put apartments on top, you know, of their buildings that they own down there, mm -hmm. I mean, the issue would be the density and that we don't have sewers and how much money would it cost in order to, to do that. And, you know, we're not a big town and it's a pretty pricey uh, event in order to do that. So. Little by little, you kind of pick and choose where you want to head with things, and you know we'll continue to, to look at downtown and you know and, and do some things down there that at least beautify it and make it look you know kind of you know up to, updated. I guess is the best word to say. All right, would you mind sticking around? I will. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti. It is actually recycling night on the Pete Mazzetti Show. We're actually town of Old Saybrook tonight. Brendan from River Valley Transit. Congressman Joe Courtney. The man, the myth, the legend, Lee Elsie. And I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks, good night. We'll see you next time. I'm Pete Mazzetti, sitting here with town council member and state representative Chris Anaskovich. Welcome back, sir. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. All right, so, Legislative session is... A month away. A month away. Yeah. Let's do a preview of the legislative session. A preview? Yes. Well, it's the, sh the short session. Right. So we're only there for three months. February to May? February to March, April. April. April, okay. Yep. February to April. And we do the same amount of work in less time. There you go. <laughs> so <laughs> there it is. There's the update. There you go. Um, <laughs> So the process changes. We actually had a, you know, a discussion so that, you know, as freshman legislators, you need to know that there's a difference between, you know, the first go around and the second go around. Um, you know, so we, a lot of the proposed bills relate to more, more so the budget items. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's any kind of proposed bills that you want to put forth, you normally write a letter, give it to your ranking members, and then they bring it to those committees that would, would listen to it or hear it. Right. Um, so the process is a little different. Um, Still, you know, still the same work, but um, oh, well. it's just you know shorter session. So, and then you go about you know worrying about what you're going to do in the next election cycle. So there's a whole bunch of different things. Right, because it's so, an election year. It's a it's real election, election year, year for you. Year. Yep. Okay. Um, as far as how did last, last legislative session go for yep. you? As your, as your first session yep. out there, how'd it go? 
It's, it's exciting. I mean, it really is. Like, once you get there, I mean, I was lucky enough to be up there in the past, way back when, yep. uh, when my brother was there, so that, you, you know, there was times when I was up there. But when, when you're there and you're a seated member and you're an elected member, it, it's, it is. It's exciting once you get up there. Um, the first year out, you're learning a lot about kind of what the, the processes, processes are yeah. as far as how you do all these things. Um, and it's, you know, you, you just have to, you got to close your mouth and you got to listen. Right. You know, that's how you learn up there. You know, first year when you're there, you just kind of see how everything operates, see how everything works and, you know, listen to the people that have been there a long time and let them guide you and direct you on where you want to be and where you want to go and, you know, develop your own identity uh, as you go. And, you know, that's kind of now you're you have one under your belt and you're ready to go again for the next one. So um, it's exciting. I like it. I love it. I love being up there and being part of that. Um, you know, we've done some great things last legislative session. Uh, recently, we just got some funding for uh, Vista uh, Innovations yep. uh, in Westbrook. We just uh, were able to get them bonding uh, for half a million dollars to do some renovations to the building. Uh, that was huge. Um, and that was a lot of work because we weren't in the first bond go around. But luckily, uh, in December, we were on the bond agenda and we received the funding so that they were able to get that. Um, and those are the things that make you know, what you do, exciting, because you're there to help and, you know, you're part of that process that, you know, you, made you, you know, help them get what they needed to get, right. you know, so that's the, that's the good part about it. Now, are your committees going to change next session or not? No, nope, they'll be the same, so I'll be on banking, commerce, and general law. Okay. So, same committees again, and we'll see what happens going forward. Did you like you, did you like your committee assignments? Committees were great. Yeah, they were. They, they were because they're all different. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, you know, general law was a you know, um, you know, a lot lot to deal with on that committee. Banking is a specific. I'm in mortgage banking. Been in banking, you know, for my career for an extended period. You know, for my whole career. Right. Um, and then commerce is you know small business related, and that that's important to me as well. One of the things that I ran on the last time was, you know, making sure you support your small businesses. Right. Make sure you support that because, for our communities, that's our fabric. You know, our small businesses really make us what we are. And, you know, you have to be able to show support for them and make sure that you're going to be available to them to help them. And, and that's what I've been trying to do uh, as it relates to a lot of the small businesses in Killingworth, um, you know, because there's a small area there. You know, you have to get out to the communities and find out what those business owners need. Right. You know, there's a lot of small business funding out there that's available. And, you know, asking the questions and listening, that's what you have to do. And you got to be able to know that you're approachable and that they can always contact you should they have a problem. And I feel that, you know, that, that has happened. I think I've, I've gotten to the point where people understand if they need something, they're looking for something, they need some direction, you know, they know to give a call and I'll respond. I'm always there. I always send, you know, respond to an email, phone call. Um, you know, that's the important thing. Right. You know, they just need to know that you are available. And, you know, whether you're their party or not their party or what, no matter where you are, you, you're still a constituent of, uh, of a territory that I represent. Exactly. And I will represent all of them, regardless of, you know, I don't ask them, you know, which party before I help. Right, exactly. You know, they call up, I help. So uh, as long as you're there to answer the phone, respond to emails, uh, they know that you're there for them. Now, what else is going on in the town of Clinton? Oh. Or what's going on in your district? In the district? Well, we got the Vista, so that was something that we got there. Um, you know, there's problems up in Killingworth as it relates to the PFAS issue. Um, it's, it's a problem that's, that's started in Killingworth. There were some issues because of the fire department, so they dealt with some stuff up there. Okay. Um, they did some testing and realized that it was, uh, there were high levels of it. So that's going to become more of a state issue because I think once we do more testing, we'll realize um, there's, it's a lot more readily available in some of the, the, the areas. So. That uh, was a, an issue that we dealt up with in Killingworth, and they have new uh, elected officials up there. They have a whole new first selectman oh, and yeah, board. That's right. So, kind of getting to know them. I met the first selectman at a um, an Eagle Scout uh, celebration that I went to a couple weeks ago oh. to issue a citation. So I was able to meet the first selectman there, and I'll get together with him and talk to him. Um, and then John Hall over in Westbrook, obviously, you know the yep. staple there, and. You know, everybody's the same over there, and, you know, they, they run a great, a great town over there. So, yeah, he's a good um, guy. Yeah, I mean, it's good. But, I mean, you get to meet those individuals that run these towns and see how they do things differently. And it's good to do that so that you can bring back to some of the other communities what you may have seen in another community that has worked or hasn't worked. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, communication across the board. And then there's the town of Old Saybrook. Uh, it's not my town. I know it's not your town, but it, it's one of my favorite first select people. Yes. <laughs> See, he is. 
he's a good guy. So yes, and I mean, every town is different. I mean, that's one of the yeah. greatest things about it. You know, I, I think it was good that I was on the council, served on the council, served on planning and zoning in, in Clinton, and was an elected official there for, you know, eight years, yeah. I guess, until before I ran for a state position. And now that I'm at the state position, you can see it from different levels and you can see that you can help more. You know, you really, as long as you're, you're there, you're present, and you're gonna do what you were set up there to do, you're gonna be able to give back to your communities. And that's what, you know, I enjoy the most about it. And as far as the town of Clinton goes, mm -hmm. what we talked about earlier, what else is yeah, I mean, what else is happening? In town? Other than that, I don't think we need any more than that. <laughs> I think we, <laughs> we have plenty on our plate for that. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it's just going to be people at Clinton just need to understand and, and I guess just be patient. Yeah. You know, this is a new time. Like just four years ago, we changed our form of government. Right. And now four years in, we're changing our town council. I mean, town council change. We're changing our town manager. And, um, you know, we weren't obviously hoping that that would happen. You know, so it came as a shock that he's leaving. And, you know, unfortunately, he got a better opportunity and, you know, felt that uh, it would be better for him and his family. So you can't fault him for it. No. You know, but now we're in a position where, you know, we have to make sure that this next decision that we make is, is an important decision for our town. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that, that this town manager has done uh, that on the council member side, we understand that. Right. But in the public side, maybe they don't understand it. Right. So at least we know that, you know, what we're looking for, and hopefully we can get that in a period of time that's not going to, you know, put us in, in a bad position going forward. The budget season is, you know, it's a terrible time. Yeah. But unfortunately it is what it is, yeah. and we'll have to deal with it. Not having a finance director, you know, that's a position that obviously we're going to go out to the streets on um, and continue to look for somebody to fill that, that role. Um, but in the interim, we'll find an interim town manager. I don't think we talked about that, did we? I don't think yeah. so. We did? Okay. So we'll... But go ahead. We'll, you know, I think hopefully by our next meeting, maybe we'll have something in place. Okay. Um, you know, because that's another position, obviously, that's very beneficial. So if we bring the interim in sooner rather than later, he gets some ample time to work with the, you know, the current town manager mm -hmm. so that he can understand how it kind of the dynamic is here. Because that's the important thing. The important thing is the town manager, every town is different. Right. And so we need to make sure that this new town manager knows the dynamic of our town. And, you know, who better than the council to understand that? Um, but it's going to be something that it's, you know, hopefully you can find that right person. Right. But it's, it's a it'll be a struggle and I don't know how long it'll take. That's the problem, the, 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 the unknown of how long this whole process will take. Right. I think is, it's scarier for council members because we sit at the table, mm -hmm. less for people that are out there, and the, you know, the citizens <laughs> of the town because they're like, oh, well, you know, they think, and it's, you know, it's not as easy as you think. No. Um, but we hope and pray that we'll have something fairly quick. But in the meantime, we'll have an interim town manager that will work with Carl, understand the dynamic of our town, and understand kind of what we'll need. The first couple times I've met him, is right, I met him right before the pandemic, and he seemed always very nice and hospitable to me. If I he's, was, yeah. I mean, he's, hi, how are you? And I mean, his knowledge, yeah. you know, I think that's the thing that I think we're gonna miss most is, is how knowledgeable he was and what he brought to our town that people didn't see. You know, the thing is, is with town manager, they're behind the scenes. They're not, you know, they're not out in the, in the daily day to day. Right. They don't go to stop and shop or to be why and hang around and talk to people because it's an apolitical position. Exactly. You know, they want to distance themselves from, from those conversations because they're right. difficult conversations. Right. So, you know, so the, the work that he did behind the scenes, you know, was instrumental into changing the dynamic of our town right. and the changing how we operate as a town. I think people, at town hall, we're comfortable knowing that they're going to be allowed to do their jobs. And if they have a problem, they can go to the town manager, but ultimately they're responsible for their jobs. And I think that's the dynamic that, that he brought to the town and that we're going to miss. How realistically, how long you think it's going to be till we have a town manager in place? We're going to have an interim and then yeah. obviously they're I mean, going to have a sub, they're probably going to have a hiring committee. And well, not, I mean, most of the stuff will be done by the council and the, and the, um, the headhunter. Okay. So the headhunter will go out and they've already posted the job and then they'll go out and they'll vet anybody that comes forward. And then at that point, they'll bring to the council the people that they feel are best suited to, to work in Clinton. Um, so it's not just the knowledge that somebody may have. Okay. It's also the dynamic of getting along and working with the people in our town. So, okay. I mean, I... Three to six months? Oh, okay. I don't know. All right. It depends who's out there, I guess. Because <laughs> yeah, right. you don't know. You don't know who you're going to get. Right. You know, because it's, you know, it could be a local search. Could it be, a, a, you know, a, 
you know, all over the country, right. no matter where it be. be a and national then, search, a local right, search. Right, or, and, you know, having somebody move in from out of state, then right. they don't really know the dynamics, or are you, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of unknown. Right. Um, and, you know, just doing it four years ago, it was a little bit different. So the, the, the whole way we did it, yep. you know, there was a search subcommittee the last time. Yep. Um, I just don't think this, this term or this time around it would be beneficial just because of the timing um, to have a subcommittee, a headhunter, because then you'd headhunter and go to the subcommittee, go to the council, right. and that just delays the process. I think we have to be, you know, let the headhunter do their job, bring who they feel is going to serve our community the best, and let the council decide, you know, who we feel would be, you know, the, the best in that role. And obviously all the information on what's going on in town can be found on the town website, correct? It could, in town of so Clinton. If you want, so if you want. Yes, the town of Clinton, all of our, we post everything on there. We have our Facebook page, which is the town of Clinton CT. Okay. Um, so we do a lot of posting there. So we keep, you know, we try to put out as much as we can. I mean, it's, it's the only way to get kind of, it's the good and bad of social media. You need, right. you know, you don't want to use it, but you have to use it. Right. You know, and, and people always have their opinions mm -hmm. on, <laughs> on Facebook mm -hmm. and on social media about what they do and don't want. But at the end of the day, you know, I've always tried to stress to people, it's like our decisions that we make are in the best interest of the people of Clinton. Yes. Not our own party, not our own person, but nope. the town of Clinton. The town. And so we have to look at that not only short-sighted, but long-term. You know, the decisions we make aren't for next year, next week. They're for three, five, ten years down the road. Because that's how you have to think as you progress through some of these decisions. Okay. Chris Hanuskovich, thanks for some Thank time. You, we'll see you soon. Yes. You got it. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. On behalf of Chris Anaskovich, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks, good night, and we'll see you next time.